Today's video takes you through the process, starting with step one, as you're starting to research and then write your paper. The very first step, as you see here, is to identify the topics of the paragraphs from your resources and then plug them into the source content worksheet. In order to do this, you need the source content worksheet seen here that has the topic and sources and blocks to fill in. You'll also need your resources and a writing instrument. Let's get started. Here we have a printout of an article on the history of New England's regional cuisine. For the purpose of this paper, we're looking at regional, traditional, local cuisine, whatever word you want to use to describe that. So I've printed off four articles that I found. The, often the titles are what interest me. And I'm looking at what local cuisine is, maybe the history of it, how it came to be. And so again, I've pulled four articles just to, uh, to look over and see. I am going through this with the exception of one article. I'm going through this fresh, so I am doing it at the same time as, um, as I am recording the video. So bear with me if I stumble, but this gives you a good idea of what uh, you're going to go through. Remember that if you do follow these steps, it should take you a lot less time to go through and research and write your paper than if you've done it the traditional way. So here we take a look at the very first paragraph. The arrival of the Pilgrims in Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620 is central to the American identity, and so on and so on. What I'm looking for is the topic. Most of the time, the best way to find the topic is to look to see if there's a topic sentence, and a topic sentence is often placed as the first sentence in the paragraph. Here we see the arrival of the Pilgrims in Plymouth, Massachusetts, which would give you an indication that perhaps this deals with immigration. Let's follow the rest of the paragraph and see. So the arrival is central to the identity and importance of religion enshrined in the First Amendment. Okay, well, maybe or maybe not, but I still think it deals with immigration. So we're going to write immigration down. Now you may note that right now we have immigration and we don't have anything to do with cuisine. That's fine. Just write it down. We'll check to see it later. So the second paragraph. What they endured is the stuff of legend, the story of the first Thanksgiving. Pilgrims would likely not have survived with the help of Native Americans. Well, here I, I honestly think that Native American influence is going to be important because here it talks about Native Americans, the Native American knowledge about indigenous food, early staples, corn, bean, squash, seafood. So I'm going to put Native Americans here. This next paragraph. Now, I do see here that there is a heading. This may or may not be the, the word that I want to use. So let's keep in mind corn, and then we'll look at the rest of the paragraph. So the pilgrims considered corn to be more fit for feeding animals than humans. Out of necessity, they learn from Native Americans. Oh, I've got Native Americans in here again. Might want to put an N-A here, and then I'll put an N-A here, because I'm seeing Native Americans again. All right, so corn went a long way. Corn, 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 corn. Okay, I definitely see corn in this paragraph, so I'm going to write corn down there. The next paragraph, again, we have a title here, seafood. Let's see if this goes through. I'm looking again at the topic sentence with the Atlantic touching every New England state of Vermont. Seafood as a food source was and is a natural. Seafood is a prime part of New England cuisine. It's the main event in dishes. Lobster, clam chowder, clams. Yes, so I'm going to write seafood here. Next paragraph. Beans, baked beans, beans, beans. Beans are doctored up with bacon. And they, oh, look, there are Native Americans again. So I'm going to put beans, and again, I'm going to put Native American. Next paragraph, cranberries, cranberries. Cranberries are indigenous in the box. All right, so I'm going to put cranberries here. So again, what I'm looking for, I'm just looking for a topic that the paragraph covers. 
Here's the last one of this article, maple sugar. Once again, the Native Americans are part of the story. Maple trees, maple sap, maple sugar, maple syrup. I would say that we're again, yes, that heading is correct. We're going to do maple sugar. Okay, so now I have taken these paragraphs and I have found what I believe to be the topic of each paragraph. So I'm going to bring this source content worksheet back into play. You see source one here. I'm going to use the last name of the author. In general, that's a great opportunity um, because very few occasions will you find that you have some the same name for multiple articles unless you're using the same author for multiple sources himself or herself. So I'm going to write down the name. And I'm also, notice this is source one. I'm also going to go to the top of this source and I'm going to number it, number one. And I'm also going to number the second page of that as number one, just in case my pages get lost. So I'm back here. I'm telling myself this is that source. And then I'm going to look at those topics that I wrote to the side and just copy them down. So this first paragraph, we looked at immigration. So I'm going to write that topic down. And in the source column, it was in the first paragraph. So I'm going to put a one in this box. What this one tells me is on this source, in paragraph one, I find information about this topic. So then we move to the second paragraph, Native Americans. So I'm going to have Native American influence. Which paragraph did it come from? Paragraph one, paragraph two. So I'm writing a two in that box. The third paragraph dealt with corn and Native Americans. So here I'm going to put corn. Which paragraph was that in? That was in paragraph three. But I also had in paragraph three the Native American influence. So I'm going to put both a three in both of these boxes. We then have seafood. So again, I just write that topic down and I say which paragraph it's in. Remember that we are still under this source, the Mitsevich source here. Going back here, we have beans. Now again, it was Native American. So in the Native American influence here, I'm going to add a five. And in the beans, I will add a five. Cranberries, I'm going to do the same thing. That was paragraph six. And the maple sugar. was paragraph seven. Where else do I put a seven? Again, up here in the Native American influence. Now, some of you are saying, but I don't think I'm going to write a paper about corn or beans or cranberries. That's okay. Go ahead and put it down on the topic chart on this source content worksheet. You can eliminate it at the end, but just the small amount of time to go through that will be taken uh, back up by the ease and the quickness that you uh, find by using this worksheet. So go ahead and write that out. So we finished looking through our first source. Now we're going to look at our second source. This one is called A Journey Through the History of American Food in 100 Bites. Right now, I'm going to call it NPR Staff. That's going to be my source two. Now let's look at these paragraphs. 
Now, when I find that I have a one sentence paragraph, I usually try to find out whether it more easily relates to the paragraph above it or the paragraph below it. So first we have apple pie isn't American in the way people often mean. Every ingredient from apples to butter to nutmeg and cinnamon came from somewhere else, but then so do most Americans. So I'm gonna group those together as a single paragraph. I'm gonna make that notation because remember that I write the paragraphs down on my source content worksheet and I would hate to get off on my count. So here, what it's saying is that there's a blend Most Americans aren't really American. Apple pie ingredient aren't really American. So we can say borrowed if we want. We could say immigrated. We could say un-American. The second paragraph, it's a, it's a new book, traces these. You know, that sounds kind of like a, an advertisement to me. I'm just gonna mark out that paragraph. My goal is to tell the story of American history through food. Each food has a story of its own. So maybe food equals history or story. Next paragraph, pemmican, the fancy name for jerky, can be found in gas stations. Remember that I'm looking for a topic sentence here. It's an authentic food that's indigenous to the new world, snack food. So this is talking about jerky. And then this one, macaroni has colonial roots. We often think of Jefferson as a man. He also popularized pasta. Okay, so this one is macaroni. What do we do next? We've listed the topics to the side of the paragraphs. We're gonna take out this sheet and write those down. So I'm gonna use un-American. And it came from this NPR staff article, paragraph one. So paragraph one of the NPR staff source was about un-American foods or ingredients. The second one is food as a story or food as history. And I'm gonna say that's in paragraph two of that NPR staff. Make sure you're in the right column. It will help you out later. The next one is jerky. And that was in paragraph three. And then the last one is macaroni. And that was in paragraph four. Now, so far, we don't have anything that overlaps. Don't worry about that, just keep working. This last one, how did the Civil War affect Southern cuisine? Tour guide themes, always changing. So my topic sentence says I've noticed some themes and then it says one of the things is food is always changing. I really like that idea. Let's see if this happens. You can trace the evolution. So that's change and here's change. So this one definitely looks like change. helps to spell things correctly. And that's in paragraph one of which article? Well, this one, it just says Savannah food tour that may come to haunt us in the end when we write our paper, but we're gonna try that right now for what it is.